it going everybody welcome back to another episode of short guy drinks whiskey now for those of you that don't know short guy drinks whiskey is a mini episode within chemotherapy and it's meant to document my journey and learnings about whiskey from january all the way up until now so tonight's video is going to focus to which one i think is better scotch bourbon or irish whiskey let's give it a look up until now i really didn't have a problem with drinking whiskey out of a container that looks like this versus this but what happens when a non-whiskey drinker like myself starts taking whiskey more seriously. Will I ever be able to tell the difference between a scotch or a bourbon, or pull out those awesome aromas that all the sommeliers can out of a Glen Cairn glass? But most importantly, out of 365 days, where will I rank the world's top whiskeys versus the lower ones? Let's find out as Short Guy drinks whiskey. Okay, I think a really good place to start is my order from Master of Malt. And what I've done here is I ordered, in my opinion, four really high-end scotches and one bourbon, which is the Colonel E.H. Taylor back there. And I wanted to see because I had a feeling that I was going to like the Colonel or bourbon more than the scotches. And I didn't want somebody coming back and saying, hey, you didn't try high-end scotch. Well, that's not fair. Well, I got Belbler 1990. I got the Dalmore King Alexander III right here. Uh, this one is a Glen Goyne 25 here. And the Hibiki 17, they don't even make this anymore. We just recently found out that uh, this is not being produced. But I tried all of them. Now, if you guys want to order some of these from Master of Malt, I'll leave my link on the bottom. And you can order through them. The nice thing about this is, yeah, you got to pay shipping from England. But there is no monthly service. And the big point is, you get to choose what whiskeys you want. You're not blindly looking for something in the mail and getting sent garbage. You're in control of exactly what you pick. Again, that link's going to be on the bottom. Uh, but let me explain a little bit more as to why I like bourbon more than scotch and even Irish whiskey. Okay, there it is. There's the winner of the five drams, the Colonel E.H. Taylor by Buffalo Trace. Hell of a bourbon. Uh, now, what came in second was the Hibiki 17, which is a Japanese scotch. Now, that flavor profile is totally different than the Dalmore, the Bob Blair, and the Glen Goyne. And that's when I really looked at it and I said, you know what? I think I'm going to like bourbon. And here are the reasons why. Now, the main thing is it doesn't matter if it's a Tennessee whiskey or a bourbon, right? The Tennessee whiskey has that cold filtration process. That's why it can be called a Tennessee whiskey. But a majority of it has to be at least 51% corn, which is sweet. It's so good. Then the secondary ingredient is either going to be rye or wheat. Now, I like wheated bourbon a lot more. I don't really like the spiciness that rye gives you. But the second ingredient is either one of those two followed by malted barley. And then that's what they call a mash bill, right? Different companies are going to have different ways that they mix that up. And that's how you get your flavor profile. But another thing that influences flavor profile are the barrels. So American white oak, it has to be new. Now, the analogy that is used a lot is you got to imagine it like a brand new tea bag, very full of flavor. You got this brand new barrel. They char up the insides, and when it's aging in there, when the whiskey's sitting in the rickhouse and aging, because of the temperature changes between summer and winter, there's a lot of in and out in the staves in the barrel, right? So the whiskey gets sucked in and then pushed back out. So all of that flavor and coloring is being pushed in and out. That's where you get a lot of the vanilla and the butterscotch from those flavors. Uh, so those are the big things, the weather conditions, the type of barrels, and of course the corn that is used all influences the flavor profile that I think I like more than the others. And that's why I like bourbon. Let's have a look at an Irish whiskey. Representing the Irish whiskey category, I got this Red Breast 12. Now this is an awesome Irish whiskey. I think it comes in a 15 and a 21. Some of the unique things about Irish whiskey, you can kind of see right on top here, single pot still or single copper pot still. I don't think if it's made in a column still, it can be called Irish whiskey, but that's supposed to be one of the secrets behind making Irish whiskey is that really old school way of making it. The column stills are the more modern way. So they really want to keep it traditional by keeping it in a single, single copper pot still. This is a mixture of malted and unmalted barley. And when they make the malted barley, there is no smoke in it. It's natural gases. So it's very crisp. It's very clean, and because of that triple distillation, that third distillation, it is very smooth. So when I want something that's smooth, crisp, and clean, I reach for this guy. If I want something sweeter, maybe a little bit more syrupy tasting, I go for the bourbon. Now getting into the barrels that I mentioned earlier, going back to the tea bag discussion, so both Scotch and Irish whiskey by law have to be some type of used barrel. And I say that because they're getting a little bit more creative in what they use. So traditionally, it's supposed to be used bourbon barrels. But this one here was made in used sherry casks. And the Dalmore, I think, was put in five different ones. So 
I think what they're trying to do is make it a little bit more lively and more tasty to try to change it up and maybe keep up with bourbon. But the sherry cask in here, I think it makes a difference. I can really taste it in here. Um, but they're used. So now what does that mean? And getting back to the tea bag discussion, all right? So like a used tea bag, when it's used, you have to keep it in the water longer and keep dipping it and dipping it and dipping it to get some kind of flavor out of it. The same thing goes for the aging process when you when using a used barrel. It, the flavor has already been drained out of it. So when it's sitting in the barrel aging, you have to keep it in there longer. The second thing that's working against this whiskey is the temperature. And in Scotland and in Ireland, it's cold. So there's not a lot of expansion going on in those barrels like there is in Kentucky. So there's not a lot of in and out with the staves of the barrel. So the temperature and the, the, the fact that the flavors have all been drained out makes it so that these guys have to sit in the barrel a little bit longer to make. Can that affect pricing? Maybe. But this costs as much as some of the bourbons I've picked up. So I don't really see it, see it as, oh, it has to sit in there longer, so it has to be more expensive. I don't think so. But I really like Irish whiskey. I put it second to bourbon, but definitely way ahead of scotch. In fact, let's have a look at a scotch. Okay, I'm going to bring out the Dalmore, King Alexander III, to represent the scotch here. So this guy right here, 100% malted barley. Sometimes they're going to have some peat and smoke in it. Depending on what region, if you haven't seen that video about Scotch regions, I'll leave a link for it right up here. It can be really heavy. I mean, so heavy, it just tastes like alcoholic liquid smoke. This Dalmore, I don't think, was that bad, actually. I don't think they used too much uh, or no peat at all in that. This one, I think, was aged in different types of barrel, like, uh, you know, port, bourbon. I, I don't remember the mixtures, but that's another thing that's a little bit different, too. It can, it can change the flavor profile. Uh, and like Irish whiskey, it can be moved around to different barrels to change that flavor profile. Uh, but... This one, most of the time, will have only a double distillation process. Sometimes they'll use three, but they don't use that, uh, that single copper pot. They use these column stills. Now, sometimes they're going to use the old technology, like the copper pot still. Sometimes they're going to use column. But as a kind of rule of thumb, the Irish whiskey normally only is in copper pot stills. These guys can most of the time be made in column or copper pot stills. I don't know what the big difference is. There's a lot of uh, whiskey connoisseurs that swear to God that the old way of making it is better. And most of the old school guys are still going to use the copper pot stills, but some of the newer guys are using columns. And if you want to look that up on the inter internet, you can. But that's one of those like little slight differences that you'll find between Scotch and Irish whiskey. Now for me, the, the fact that it's 100% malted barley is boring. It doesn't really taste like anything for me. I don't know how those higher end wine or whiskey connoisseurs can pull out all those flavors. It's just really boring. And then when you get hit with some smoke, it just makes everything not enjoyable for me. But that's the way I take it. But guys, that's the ending of this video. That's my take on it from January of this year all the way till now. So far, weeded bourbon is the thing I like the most. Maybe by December, it'll be a little bit different. I'll try more scotches. I'll try more Irish whiskeys, but I don't think it's going to change very much. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And remember, I'll catch you guys later.